in the dark because um, we're going to be left in the dark, black and brown people, if we do not say something about the maps that have been drawn. Whether it is the Republican maps, whether it is the people's maps, or whether it is the Senate and the Democrat maps that have um, been drawn, all of the maps leave us in the dark. All of the maps do not respect the VRA, and all of the maps do not give us the percentages that we are due in order to be able to have black and brown representation. And I know you will hear different things from different individuals, so I want to share numbers with you. The present maps that we are in right now, in my Senate district, number four, the district I'm in, it's 58.5% African-American. That is a percentage that is right there about the lowest that you can go in order to be able to maintain districts of color. In particular, the assembly districts are 56.7, 62.5, and 57.6. But these maps are gerrymandered in a way that denies partisanship. So you have more Republican seats than Democratic seats, and that's not fair. Those are the maps that we are in. Those maps also have Assembly District 16 at 52.8, 65.2, 417 at 18 is 57.5, with Senate District 6 being at 58.5. I will leave my colleague from the assembly to speak about the Hispanic districts and how the Baldis ruling specifically said they had to redraw the lines for Hispanics. The reason it was not done for African Americans because no one sued behind the 2011 maps. The present maps that we have now in assembly district 10, it would be 45.78% by the GOP map for district 10 for 11 it would be 71.47 percent that's packing blacks do not have to be at 70 percent in order for them to satisfy the vra it's a really fine line between packing or cracking cracking is when you spread us out across districts in a way that violates us district under the gop map district 16 is 52.5 percent District 17 is 60.18 percent. District 18 is 50.8 percent. And the Senate districts, respectively, are District 4 at 57.18 percent and District 6 at 50.49 percent. I know you say, Senator, that's a lot of numbers. If you didn't hear 60, then understand what I'm saying. The maps have not provided what the VRA says we should protect ourselves, what we are protected to be able to have so that we as a block would be able to vote for candidates of our choice. That's what the law says. And I know some people say, well, you know, we're doing what block asks. Block is black leaders organizing communities. Well, block don't speak for me because blocks maps say that they want seven seats and they want seats at 51.1%, 50.3%, 50.4% in the 4th Senate District, and in the 6th Senate District, 50.7%, 50.4%, and 50.6%. That is unacceptable. You have to consider the totality of the circumstance. It says that if you live in a jurisdiction that has discriminated against a community, they then are entitled to a majority minority district. We're number one in the nation for being the worst place to raise a black child and to be a black American. Disparities lead in the nation. So block requesting seven seats allows for them to spread us out and to give us districts that are not where they need to be. I'm standing at the Martin Luther King statue because Martin Luther King said, we can't wait. He said, I have a dream, but he said, we can't wait. And when he said, we can't wait, 
we can't wait for black representation. First of all, we got it. And second of all, we're entitled to maintain it. And third of all, we will not accept opportunity districts that deny us what we already have and what the law says we should get. And you know, I appreciate Representative Supervisor Ortiz because at the county when the maps were good, when the sewer pack drew maps because the, the, the county supervisors did not for the Latino uh, community, the sewer pack drew those maps. When they drew those maps and they were good for the Latino community and I showed her the numbers of what it meant for the black community, she would not leave the black community behind. We cannot leave each other behind in this. And don't get me wrong, we want maps that are fair, fair for competitiveness and partisanship, but I wanna be clear, not at the extent of losing black and brown representation that's due us. If after we get to 60%, I got some black people left for you, move them in another district, I'm cool with that. But you cannot deny us what the Constitution and what the Voter Rights Act protects us from. Representative? Uh, thank you. Um, I want to say a few words and then I want to cover some things for the Latino community. Talk a little bit about the Baldus ruling. Because that's a really important ruling, actually. Um, and then talk about what the differences are between opportunity districts and majority minority districts. Serious violations of the Voting Rat Rights Act have are being proposed concerning the People's Maps Commission or the Governor's Maps. I will not remain silent while others try to unlawfully try to prevent us from electing candidates of our choice in Milwaukee. These maps are illegal to chander and are, per are a perversion of justice that cannot stand. If we cannot find justice in the House or from the executive branch, we will find justice in the court of law. We will inform our communities of what is going on, we will engage in all, in any way we can to fight any injustice against our rights that are guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution. We are all equals in our state, which is guaranteed by our Constitution. Results of cracking and dilution and the impact of these maps have on black and brown communities are serious violations of the Voting Rights Act. There is, there is a way for everyone to be treated fairly in our state. Doing it at the expense of others is wrong. It's immoral, unlawful in all these totalities of circumstances. I also want to add that we cannot let Governor Tony Evers, Eric Holder, and the NRDC steal and cancel our voices. This map does not represent the values of our state. It only serves to divide us further. There is a national effort, an attack on all of our legal rights going on so Democrats can have more seats at the expense of our constitutional rights. This is a perversion of justice and it cannot stand. It results in cracking and diluting the black and Latino community. Milwaukee's black and Latino communities, we are the target. They want to take out minority majority districts and give us nothing protected by the VRA. When we, when were they going to tell us the truth? The whole time they told us they were building minority majority districts and then came the, the quick pivot and sleight of hands. There were many sleights of hands. How did a national agenda end up in these maps? Majority minority districts are protected by the Voting Rights Act. Once certain elements are met, they must be made. They must be made. Must be made. And tamed. And especially because we can, we, we still have, because we already have them, they can't be, they're protected. They have a right under Lulak versus Perry. We have a right to continue to keep it as long as you meet those, those parameters. But let me tell you what the opportunity districts do. Before you do, the parameter is that we have to at least have a 50% population of which we do, and that you're in a jurisdiction that has discriminated against those populations. Go on. Right? And there's other factors too, dilution, voting behaviors. Correct. We gotta look at the totality of situations, but which are, are, are tremendous in Milwaukee and very complicated. Um, so the opportunity districts, what they really are is 
they're nothing it, <laughs> is what they really are because they're not they have no protections under the VRA and really what it is is it's it's really kowtowing uh, 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 really cracking and diluting so really it's a violation of the Voting Rights Act and they're doing it for a political purpose which again is a violation of the Voting Rights Act there are very many problems constitutional problems that are going on here they want to do a switcheroo and eliminate our voices at the table don't worry they can then work on issues that are important to us and be our voice for us and speak for us. I feel sorry for all the people of our state of Wisconsin who deserve much better and deserve to know whose agenda is in that map and how and why is it happening all over our nation. Um, going into um, the Baldus ruling, which is a very interesting ruling. It was ruled in 2012. There's a couple things that are important to know about that ruling. First of all, it says in that ruling, that you can't take majority minority districts and replace them with opportunity districts. You can't do that. Actually, there's many cases that say you can't do that. Um, we know on this that the law is on our side, um, but they, we also know um, that uh, we have voodoo lawyers um, who, um, whose goal is to destroy our rights under the Constitution. Only, only to get partisan gain. And don't worry, folks, because they'll be our voices for us. We don't need to be at the table speaking for ourselves. So we're gonna go back to the 1960s. You know what this is? This is a white supremacy agenda. This is a white supremacy agenda. That agenda, that national agenda, how did it make it into our map? Because it was all a show. I'm sad to say folks, but you've all been deceived. The People's Maps Commission was not a fair process and it produced a product that it was meant to produce. We tried, we tried to contact people to get them to turn around and stop. They, they, they hoodwinked us. They told us, we're not doing this. They, they dismissed us. They, they did the very, very series of brainwashing techniques going on through the whole thing so that they can all of a sudden steal our voices. They want to cancel out our voices. They want equity. They want equality in, in the partisan uh, uh, sphere, but they don't want equality for you at the expense of your quality, at the expense of your voice, and at the expense of your rights that are guaranteed in the U.S. Constitution. Well, I say to all of them, they will be met with resistance, they'll be met with uh, courts, hearings, because we will take it to the court because we know we will get justice at the third branch. The law is on our side, and they are waking a sleeping giant. We will not relent. We will continue to let our communities know what's going on and to let them know who stands with them and who does not? Because our communities know that we do. And they need our votes. They need our votes to win statewide races. We could do a day, stay home, Latinos and blacks, and they can see. They can see then what it is, that how much power the people have. Because it, the power is in the people. And don't let them ever forget it. Thank you. One of the things I want to add. Oh, wait, the ball is ruling. So the, the ball is ruling spread for the Latino community, and specifically for the Latino community, what we need, our needs are, is this. So the ball is really sad because of many factors. The fact that we have people in our communities that can't, are counted in our census that cannot vote. And we have to look at who can actually vote. So the actual measure is citizen age population. Which, by the way, versus none of, what? That versus they continue to use. What they continue to use, the wrong measures and all the maps. Voting, voting age, age population. population. Which, um, we know that that's not the proper measure. Um, what, why don't they want to show us the data? Uh, we've been asking for the data. We have records. We have lots of evidence to show that we have that we brought these issues to the uh, elected officials uh, and to others, and that they were ig we were ignored, which is another violation. So their concerns have been brought to them, but it's because this has been their agenda all the time. Their agenda all the time is to take to, to cancel on our voices, which is a violation of the voting rights. So again, going back to the Latino community, we need one district at 70 next one at the highest it can be and we need a third assembly district to keep it all together so that one day one day we can elect a state senator it's a latino too that we can be at the table too or so, not even a latino someone that doesn't matter who it is but as long as it's someone we choose that's self-determination that's what they want to take from us our self-determination because with less than that exactly. what we have is majority we don't have a voice we won't have a voice and believe me they won't be a voice for us because they're willing to take our voices from us that's all I gotta say. Well, Thank you. Sylvia, before you go, yes. one of the things, one your phone, but the, one of the things I wanna make sure that uh, we speak to, Sylvia said that we'll get justice in the courts. So first of all, many people have opinions about whether or not we can get justice in the court system, okay? 
And the other issue that is even a larger concern is that there are already individuals who are right. plaintiffs. There are already cases. Sylvia called them voodoo lawyers. They are lawyers that represent all of the interests or the, the Senate Dems have a lawyer. The uh, the governor, People's Map, I assume, have lawyers. Well, can I just um, well, well, give me one second. But the point is, is that there are lawyers that are fighting and there are cases. But there is no one who has spoke to the VRA in the way that we have spoken to about the majority minority districts that we have that are representing black and brown people. So we have actually reached out um, and we reached out both to um, um, a gentleman who has done major work in our state around voter protection. And I don't know if Peter wants to speak, but we've talked to him about helping us to find a civil rights lawyer. And we also have talked to the civil rights organizations that have led the charge for black and brown people in this nation, both the NAACP and, and Lula. Lula. Yeah, so what I'll say to that is that, um, you know, make sure that pe if people, anybody who's saying that they're advocating in our com for our behalf of our community, make sure you let them know that we do not want opportunities and they can't take from us what we already have. Um, it's regressive. Um, tell them that we want majority minority districts. We want to be able to elect candidates of our choice. We want self-determination. We want to be equal to. So just like make sure that you let them know how you feel about it. Because um, we want to make sure that we have a big partisan fight going on here. And we don't need other people factoring in other things because the only factor for our communities is our rights as well. We have rights as well. Guaranteed in our constitution. Some should say more rights than others, actually, that are that are fighting over this map. There's been cases that, you know, they've been thrown out of court that they didn't have a right under partisanship issues. We have more of the right. We're being thrown to the sidelines here. Not only that, we gotta make sure that our community's voices are being met are heard at that table. We need to make sure that we have someone there for us that are really fighting for us. We want to make sure that we have a couple of other people who want to yeah. be able to speak. Yeah. One of the things that I want to um, make sure people are probably saying, well, you know, how do you know that it can be done? Because we actually took the time to There's draw a map. maps. There's a map, There's a map that <laughs> and, shows it. And we know that you can get to districts that are um, compliant with the VRA right. or who are at the highest numbers that you can get that are close to it. This isn't just guessing. No, we, they're um, there. They're there we, we've made a lot of maps and we've been able to see it. Now, no, I did not do an entire statewide map, but we also know that maps can be um, fair to partisanship Everybody. and to mm -hmm. competitive. Because we have one. And so there are three map, three things you need to consider in the map process. One is process. Do people have an opportunity to be in the midst of the process? And is it not partisan? Two. Are the maps VRA friendly or do, or do they violate the VRA? And three, are they competitive? So the GOP maps, they do 11 Senate districts when presently we have 12 and that's the lowest we've ever been instead of trying to get a margin that's like 16, 17 or something like that. Um, and I'll end with, we also know cases that help us know why 60% districts don't work. I'd ask and I don't mean know, 50, Drea. Mean 50. No, I mean 60% for Latinos oh, for don't Latino. work. And 50% yes. we know don't work for African Americans. But the most recent example that we have is a race that uh, Drea Rodriguez was in. Uh, Drea, if you want to share the number of wards that were Latino and the number of wards that were not. So, and so it, it's an important component and it matters about a Latino community being able to pick a candidate of their choice. And then I'd like to end with, um, Peter, if you could speak to, if you were able to help us to connect with a civil rights lawyer and beyond that, as someone who has done work in voter protection, what your position is. And if anybody else wants to speak after that, uh, uh, do you want to speak to it instead of Dre or Dre? No, do you no, want to speak to it? Want to speak to it or I'm, I'm happy to speak. Let's to please it. do. Hi everyone. My name is Andrea Rodriguez. I'm a community organizer and educator. Most recently, ran for office um, in District Four for the County Supervisory. 
Um, it was a very unfair race. We know that. We know when those maps were drawn, they were not representing our people. Um, 19 voting warrants that I won, all Latino majority. Um, nine, I believe I did not win, but I did have the majority. Six. I'm sorry, six, thank you. I did have the majority in, in those that were Latino majority, and it gives you an idea how, no matter how much we're knocking on those doors, no matter how many people, how much lit we have out there, we are not getting the fair representation we deserve. Right now, we fought for this well over 50 years ago to have these rights to fair maps and fair process and making sure our voices are heard. My daughter is eight years old. In 10 years, she will be 18 and ready for her first election. She cannot wait, her generation cannot wait for us to finally have a fair process. What they are doing is wrong. I'm so glad that we have the representation right now to bring it to our attention and make sure that we have the power to fight back. I am thankful for all community leaders that are here today to make sure that we are fighting and, and we're informing people about how the wool is being pulled over our eyes and we are being limited in our power. And we are here to stand together to make sure that this never happens again and her generation will never have to deal with this. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Hi, my name is Peter Pekarski. I'm a lawyer in, uh, from Milwaukee. I'm also a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the United States Senate seat, uh, which is being contested next year. I have listened to my uh, neighbors here. Uh, I have protected the rights of the minority community in Milwaukee and around the state for about the last 20 years. Uh, every election day, I'm preparing for the elections to protect everybody's right to vote, uh, in particular the people uh, in Milwaukee, where those rights, for various reasons, are under attack uh, by people from another party. Uh, I have listened to them at length. Um, at their request, I have spent uh, a substantial amount of time trying to find counsel for them uh, to protect their rights, to protect the rights of this community in connection with the redistricting which is going on now, and which will continue, it looks like, uh, in the courts. And as to what can be done about this, uh, if I am elected, I intend to see that the Voting Rights Act gets restored in full and is strengthened. Uh, that that is I that has to, to happen. I don't want to be political in that regard, Peter, but uh, I hear I, I, you. Okay, and I sorry, sorry. I, what your position I, is, I, but I, 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 I don't think this is political at all. I, th be. I think this is protecting the right of every American to vote. Everyone, regardless of what their party is, or regardless of what their color is, everybody in this country has a right to vote, and I intend to protect that right the way I've protected it for a long time. I am here to listen to my neighbors and support them, and I ask you to do the same, to support them in their efforts. Thank you, Peter. Peter yeah. I appreciate you, Peter, and you I want standing. people to know that Peter has always been someone who has done the work around uh, voter protection. Uh, whether it is making sure that people can go to polling locations and Quick have question, Lena, individuals. Uh, just, uh, and, All and, questions. And, yeah, yeah. So, I guess my question tonight would be, the people in Milwaukee that are going to be seeing these streams that are being recorded at this press release, what would you like them to do? What's the next step? Should so, they do anything? Should they make phone calls? They can. First of all, your assembly members um, throughout the state are going to be voting on Thursday. And so you have the opportunity to talk to them, to give them your opinion of tomorrow. whether or not you believe tomorrow. and how you believe the they House. should vote. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow, The Senate has already voted. Correct. And that was a shame. And, and all I can tell you to shame. do is look at the data for yourself. I will post the data. I will provide the data to all of you if you do not have it. All I'm asking people to do is look for, look at the data. Okay. And if the data shows you that the VRA is not protected, I need you to speak up. And I'm telling you that it doesn't. Okay. Can yes. you identify yourself? My name is State Senator. My name is Lena Taylor. I'm State Senator of the 4th Senate District. Thank Any you. other questions? Thank you. Um, are you worried about uh, your chances for re-election if these uh, maps were to pass? I am not. Um, I've already um, always have been in a district um, when I was a state representative as well as uh, as a state senator that has a piece of a suburban district. Um, I have uh, receipts in the community uh, where people show up for me. And um, so I'm not concerned about that. As a matter of fact, in many of the maps, my district was great. It's not about me. This is about making sure that black and brown people have 
the voice that they are entitled to to pick candidates of their choosing. And I have to be extremely clear, even the maps that might have been good for the black community but wasn't good for the Latino community, I'm not for that. And I want to be clear, because I am standing up for black and brown people doesn't mean that I want maps that are not good competitively. You can do all of the above without yes. sacrificing black and brown yes, people is what I'm saying. Yes, you can. Everybody and what can I'm saying is I refuse to be silent. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying I was sent. I was sent by individuals from the 4th Senate District, but more than anything, I was sent by my mama and my daddy and my granny and right. the people who right. made it right. possible to be who I am, That's right. who taught me to stand up and fight for myself and fight for my community. Right. And because of that, I will not be silent. Why do you think the Democratic Party, of which you're a member, has been, you know, as you guys describe it, putting up resistance to what you see as flaws in the map? I think the truth of the matter is, is that Republicans have done maps in the dark, they've done maps with lawyers, and they've packed black and brown people in districts. And so the, the Democrats are trying to stand up to say that the process is unfair. And I agree with them. The process has been unfair. We deserve a fair process that includes the people. And they also are saying, how can you do a map that only gives us 11 Senate seats? And I forget how many um, seats in the assembly. And so they're saying that is totally skewed in what is not fair to the people of Wisconsin. Ooh, but they here. also are concerned because often black and brown people vote Democrat. And so if we have higher number districts that allow us to pick a candidate of our choosing, it does prevent them from being able to spread out as far as they would like. And I respect that. I just can't accept that. But you know what? I can't even accept that because the fact is, is we got a map that they didn't have to do that. Right. So then I ask even further, whose agenda is this? Again, this is a national agenda that made it into our map. And this agenda is a white supremacy agenda. Because it's canceling out black and brown voters. That's what it's doing. Well, I, with, I, I with a political intent. With a political intent. With a political intent. The intent is to create more democratic seats. So they can be our voices for us at the table. That Some sounds people. that sounds like a white supremacy uh, situation. Some, Some people feel they're okay with that. Some people feel that um, there are good, you know, good folks that will be able to represent yeah. us good good white folks that will be able to represent us and represent our interests. I believe that we can speak for ourselves. Exactly. And don't get me wrong, I'm 100% for having uh, fairness and competitiveness. But I just need to be clear, not at, the, not at the cost of black and brown representation where it is due us by the law and the Constitution and the Voting Rights Act. And, and more that's than, all I'm and, saying. And more than that, that's it. That it's exactly. really about a be, that's the answer. We can pick our own. So really it's about us being able to determine and being able to have the power, the voting power to determine who our candidate of choice is. Because it doesn't matter if we don't actually have the actual voting power to do that. Because it's not real then. So yes, it's in name only. It's in so numbers only. There's a lot of different things when it comes you have to a question. Would you, yes. Would you think that racism is one of the factors in this situation? Because uh, I noticed that the stats the black community is targeted targeted more and it has more to lose yeah. than the Latino I, I, community. I'm just going to be very honest with you. I can't tell you the intent of the individuals that have drawn the maps. What I can tell you... I can. No, you can't tell it's them the, the intent. The the no, you can't tell them the intent of the people that drew the maps. But what I can tell you is that the maps deny us. And I can't get in the head of the people who did it. You Maybe you want to say you can, Sylvia, but I want to speak facts. Right. The facts that I can speak is that the numbers deny us and that alone is insufficient for me. I'm not gonna try to talk about all the extra because I don't know. I wasn't there, I can't get to that. Some people feel strongly about partisanship more than they care about what happens to communities of color. And what I'm saying to you is that I care about the VRA and that we have a voice and then after that, I, I want the rest of the maps to be fair also. It, well, what it I sounds like, to, like, and this might just be simply yes or no, it sounds like you guys feel that uh, the Democrats, in an attempt to increase Democratic seats, correct. have uh, packed and crack, uh, cracked. Cracked. They cracked. Districts. They cracked. Republicans have packed. Cracked, sorry. Yes. And Democrats have cracked. Right. 
the and the Dillon Dillon is on board too. That is correct. Sadly. Okay. Sadly, yeah. Sadly, yeah. Sadly, what I want to say about the Latino community is under the, under the people's maps, under the agenda, uh, the Today. agenda, uh, no, under the agenda of the people's maps, it will result in not having ability to elect not one single state representative. So it'll totally annihilate our representation. We won't have one representative there. Or not well, from our community. Not, not from necessarily our, true. There could be if communities that are not communities of color agree oh, that's right. with who that candidate <laughs> oh, that, could be. Well, that but means, we, we don't have not, a choice anymore then. That, that, we could not we that would mean we wouldn't have a choice that. anymore, right? That's Correct. Not okay. So it would leave the, the would Latino leave community with nothing at the state, at the assembly level, and forget about the Senate. Forget. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, what I would say is that, um, in a way, yes, I do see the agenda because the agenda is in the map. And the agenda is to take minority majority districts, violate the Voting Rights Act, so they can spread out their vote, gain more more, more seats. All true. Um, and 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 by the way, um, and leave us with uh, something that doesn't even have any rights under the Voting Rights Act. Oh, that's a good point. So you, we, you need. To so there is an intent. A There's a bit. ton of intent, and you can see it in the map. And what that means is. Under the majority minority districts, they are protected under the Voter Rights Act, but opportunity districts are, are not. not. And there's a sleight of hand. And once we once they that take part. them away from us, oh man, it would be just so much yeah. work to try to we get got them back. Last question. Yeah, another question. Uh, yeah. Would you think that the governor Tony Evers is committing political suicide? Because as I understand, in the last election, uh, Evers won the election by the by the Latino vote and the black vote and now that Tony Evers is supporting and in favor of the people's Ma maps commission maps which dilutes both communities and political representation you think that would be uh, that he's going to get either reelected or not in the next election or, or is he I, I don't I don't have a crystal ball and I agree um, you know the people will make that decision. But what I can say to you is that I want to make sure that the people understand. What's going on? And what I will say is that Governor Evers is going to veto the Republican maps that also deny us. And the Republican maps that are not fair to the VRA and are not fair to partisan or competitive maps. He's going to veto that. And They're that is that people's maps. And that's a good thing. Maps. And right. in the court, there are going to be people that fight for various things in the court, and that is why trying to make sure that black and brown people have representation in the court to maintain majority minority districts is key. And and very candidly, everybody might change their, their position later. They may have better maps that don't harm us, that they fight for. I'm just telling you where we are now, what we see now, and what we see now, I'm sounding the clarion call saying that it's not acceptable and it's not okay. So what would be your message to uh, Governor or Tony Earl or Evers? Evers? My message to anyone is that if the maps violate the VRA, do not stand with the maps that violate the VRA. Correct. If black people do not have districts that can, they can actually um, elect a candidate of their choosing regardless of a white block, that's what the law says. That's what the VAR protects for. If that does not happen, do not vote for those maps. Amen. And if someone is in court and they are arguing for maps that do not do that, do not support those people who are fighting for maps that do not protect majority minority districts. Say again, what, what kind of districts? Can you say that Majority alone? minority is that, is districts. That the kinds we want? I don't want an opportunity. I want a majority. Man, right. I want a majority district of color, and that means 58 to 60 is percent for blacks and that means 70 percent for hispanics because drea ran in a district that was 60 percent yep. so that lets you know that you can't give us a district that's 40 and tell me that it's a district of color and not that's in name only that's in numbers okay. only thank you so much any other questions i think there's thank people you. that we want to hear from senator oh, I think oh no Vaughn. Vaughn is going to speak and then uh are you going to speak you have some great things to say really Oh, come on, oh, you, know, you gotta jump okay. in here. Go ahead, um, Go ahead, Vaughn. Vaughn Mays, community activist. Um, I want to thank both Lena and Sylvia for uh, having the courage and consistency to advocate for the larger picture um, and for calling out even their own party and governor, in this case, on our behalf more so than their own. Um, I want to speak past the Senate. Um, you know, I think Lena, you said they already voted today and even past uh, tomorrow's vote with the assembly.
past even the governor and even to them all plus to the courts when I say that this is not what we want nor what's best for black and brown people in this state. Um, and activism, we have a saying that says uh, no justice, no compromise. Um, these maps do us no justice and they ask us to compromise. Amen. Um, whether Democrats doing it, whether it's Democrats doing it or Republicans doing it, um, these maps reflect self-interest and not the interest of you or I. Um, self-interest of the parties, I, I should say. Yep. Uh, we need to, to tell the state Democrats and Republicans that we do not support these maps. Um, the, we support the law and the Voter Rights Act's um, what the Voter Rights Act ensures us. Uh, we need our decisions to at least remain our decisions. Um, these new maps create, as they said, um, keeps taking me past. These new maps create opportunity districts, but I ask opportunity for who? <laughs> um, merging districts with large black populations with suburban white districts, knowing that there will be a ratio gap in actual voter participation in black communities specifically, will make it virtually impossible for candidates who share the interests of those communities and will likely end up um, will likely end up not sharing the interests of those communities and not reflect the entire population of those new districts. Uh, understand what that means for you if you are a black or brown person in this city. What does it mean? Um, <laughs> in a city and state that is just starting to see folks of color win seats and races like never before, these maps mean a step backwards. Um, we already know our voices in Milwaukee um, are continuously suppressed and our interests even more so. Um, we already see what's happening with budgets and all these different types of things. People are just not listening, whether it's Democrats or it's Republicans. So again, when we are lessening um, our opportunity to get somebody that we want in there, we'll have even more of what we are already seeing, which is not going to be good. Um, the senator and state rep both spoke on the protection the law provides with correct and fair maps. Um, redlining and gerrymandering uh, has been on the rise nationally. Uh, attempts to stifle or stop the ability to protest, let alone to vote, are under attack. Uh, we do not want it in Wisconsin, and there will be a clear loss to the communities who are already losing too much. Um, so I stand with the few electives to say no, and we need to know where our other electives stand and why their stance is as such. Um, the sole fact, to, to my, you know, even beyond all the stuff we can say, the sole fact that this is a clear constitutional violation and a direct violation to the Voter Rights Act, that is in place as a protection to black and brown communities for a reason. So beyond, like even when they were explaining this to me, which I knew nothing about, I didn't know nothing about the, the People's Map and the, the Republican, any of these maps, but when they explained to me that this is a violation of the Voter Rights Act, I'm like, well, what's the problem? If it's in violation of the law, why is it allowed to even move forward? How is this even possible? Um, and if, if nobody is moving forward, because like I said, I'm trying to think past them because I expect these maps and this conversation goes to the courts. And if it goes to the courts and this is what the law says, and this is what's best that, that Voters' Right Act is in place to protect black and brown communities and assure us a voice in the decision of our own, then why are people even able to vote or even move forward with anything that allows them to be in violation? That is my question. I'd like to answer that for you. The Voter Rights Act was gutted under the Trump administration. And during that time, now we only have um, section two and section five. And part of the issue that we have at hand here is that we actually could fix the Voter Rights Act at the national level. And I am gonna go to DC to help to march and rally to say that the Voter Rights Act should be protected and we should go back and make sure that section four in the Voter Rights Act is put back in and very candidly, you know, a lot of people don't understand what's Who happening. Should, this is a lot. This is a lot of I just have any details. Who should we be no, talking to about the Voter Rights Act? The federal um, level, you can speak to your representatives and your president at the federal level to ask for the Voter Rights Act to be addressed and to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And for that, that's what Congressman John Lewis was talking about when he said, get in good trouble. This, this is his, been his issue that he stands on. If he was here, he would say that it is not right to dilute black and brown communities.
black and brown community. I, I believe that with everything I have. I just wanted to add two things real quick. Um, the U.S. Department of Justice should look into all of the maps for Voting Rights Act compliance. And this is a, situ a dire situation that they need to get involved in. I do want to make a shout out to Representative Cabrera, who couldn't be here with us tonight, and Representative Lakeisha Myers. Yes. Yes. Because, uh, yeah. They've been fighting with us. That's right. We the squad. <laughs> and I'm going to any dark alley with any of these Word ladies, of including New York. But we need to put the pressure on the rest of them. Because you're wondering why, where are they? That's what you need to be asking them. So where do they stand? Rally. Do they stand with us? Or do they stand with them? Friday night. Friday night at Cesar Chavez, we'll, we'll be joined again, all together, uh, to continue to put pressure on the governor and to put, continue to put pressure on the Republicans. Uh, and, and including and the, the Democrats. On everyone. To do right by everybody. Because there's no reason that everybody's voice in our state uh, doesn't matter. Oh, we are, all our voices matter. And we all should have an equal voice. Matter of fact, we're not asking. We are demanding that the law be followed. I want that to be very clear. This is not a request. These are our rights. These are our rights. There are lawful acts being committed against our Constitution, our constitutionally protected rights, and we are demanding that the law be followed. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. And I just want you to remember what Drea said. Her daughter is eight. She will be able to vote 10 years from now when maps are drawn again. And she needs to be treated fairly now so that opportunity can exist for her and others like her to have representatives that look like her. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you all for coming out. It means a lot. It really does. It means a lot. Angel, you can't leave before we take the pictures. The pictures. <laughs> okay.